How is it going people and welcome back to the second episode of the Discord bot tutorial. So in the first video we went through just the basic setup so we managed to get the absolute basics of the basics working. So we so like we've pretty much managed to um, set up the bot configuration and get our um, 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 our first Discord bot to approach come online. So in this video I'm going to teach you how to make commands um, and pretty much have some fun with them. Uh, because the bane of a Discord bot is pretty much the amount of commands that it offers, right? If you've ever used a Discord bot before, such as Dino, you've definitely used a Discord command before. Um, so, like, normally a Discord command consists of two things. So, one is usually the prefix. So, remember when we, when we set up our prefix in the config.json file. So in this video, we are going to be setting that up finally. So the prefix is actually what you use to execute a command. So for example, if I were to execute a help command, I would type in the prefix and then type in help. So, so what we're going to be doing is setting up the commands configuration and we are going to be writing our very first command to just send a simple message back to the channel. So let's get started with that. Okay, first of all, we have to set up our bot to use commands because like we can't just write down a command and expect it to work because in our main bot configuration we haven't configured anything to do with commands all we've done is make this private static uh, commands next extension uh, property up here so we are going to set up this very property right here so first of all let's go down um, underneath the client ready method because we are going to be doing this before we connect the bot and get it to come online so if you think about what we're doing here we are basically setting up our whole bot and then the connect async occurs so let's say var and then commands config and let's make a new instance of the commands next extension. So what we're going to do is make a commands next configuration. So let's say new and then commands next configuration. Cool. And it's done all of the autocorrect for us. And it's even opened our curly brackets for us. So let's end it with a nice uh, colon there. And let's get started. So the first thing in this commands next configuration we are going to do is set up the prefix. So let's say string prefixes is equal to a new string array. And we are going to pass in our prefix from the JSON reader because remember, when we execute this read JSON, it's going to populate these two variables with the correct token and the correct prefix. So now it's time to use this prefix um, a property right here. So let's so let's say in these curly brackets, we'll say JSON reader and then prefix. So we've now implemented our prefix into the bot. The next thing to do is to actually enable that prefix to be used in the bot. So let's say enable mention prefix is equal to true. So this line allows us to actually use this prefix with this bot. I'm going to allow this bot to talk in DMs. So let's say enable DMs is equal to true. And put, like as you can see in this configuration, like if I just type in A, then look at all these different, you know, um, um, like these different properties that you can mess around with. Look, there's so many things here. So it's pretty much up to you with, with, with the optional stuff, but I'm just going to do the basics. So we, so um, like we've said enable DMs equals to true. And I'm also going to do another thing, and that's to disable the default help command. So let's say enable default help, and I'm going to set that to false. Because later on in the series, we are going to be making our own help command. But if you want to see how the help command works in this bot, then you can leave this to true. And like the bot has its own um, approach default help commands. But I'm going to set this to false because honestly, we can make better help commands later on. So that's our uh, commands next configuration. The next thing to do is to tell this commands variable to approach enable the use of commands in this bot. So let's say down here, uh, commands. So this very variable up here. And we're going to make use of the client to enable commands within this bot. So let's say client and then use commands next. As you can see, it enables the commands next module on this Discord client. That's pretty much is it's you know like you know like there's no other explanation for it. It's pretty simple in plain English. So what we're going to do is pretty much pass in our commands config in here. So commands config. And uh, cool, that's all pretty much set up. And um, um, and for reference, the parameter needs a commands next configuration. We've just made one right here. So that's all cool. 
So now that we've set up the commands configuration, it is time to write our first command. So like the way we do it in C-sharp is to do it within classes. And we can actually organize our folder structure really well. So like we've got our nice project here. We've got a folder for our config. The program.cs is obviously there as default. So let's create a new folder for our commands. And, and that folder is only dedicated to commands. So let's right click, let's add a new folder. And, then, and let's name this commands. Cool. And let's add a new class in here. So let's name this. I mean, you know, like, you know, like the name is up to you. You know, like what style of commands do you, do you want to create? Is it going to be gaming commands? Is it going to be tools or utility commands? Is it going to be, you know, like stuff to do with apps? I don't know. But I'm just going to call this test commands. So simple as that. And we're obviously going to set this up, make this public and all sorts. So we're ready. Right now, this is just a plain old class. Like we need to provide some, you know, like some basic logic to this class so that we can start writing commands. What we're going to do in this class is have this inherit a basic class. So what we're going to do is add a colon and we're going to let this class inherit something called the base command module. Let's type in base command module. And as you can see in the description, it says represents a base class for all command modules. So this class, think of it as a, a sort of basic structure that allows this class to have commands in it. So let's, so, so let's put that in. And this class is now ready to write commands. So now onto the main question, how do we write Discord commands? So I'm gonna give you guys a basic layout and this layout is pretty much how you write Discord commands. So the first thing you guys need to do is declare your command in square brackets. So let's do that first. So in square brackets, we're going to say command. And as you can see, it's using our D shop plus attributes. So let's open a bracket and see what it needs. So first of all, it needs a name. So let's give it a name. I'm, I'm just going to call it test. So this is our so, that, so this is our very first command. You declare your command in square brackets and give it a name. And then the second step is to write a method for it. Here's how you write the method. So this method must be public first. So public. And since a Discord bot is an asynchronous application, we're going to say async and then task. So those are the main properties of this method. Now let's give it a name. I'm, I'm just going to say my first command. Now like now the name of this method actually doesn't matter so you, you can literally give it any name you want and it's not going to matter in this command as a parameter we're going to have something called a command context so let's say command context and then we'll say ctx as the name of this so what is this command context so this command context is the very variable or class that pretty much allows us us the programmers to pretty much add any discord interaction that you want this command context contains literally every single thing that you can do in a, in a discord bot nearly everything if i type in ctx and then dot look at all these properties man there's so many i can access the command i can access the server and so like that's known as guild i can access the channel i can access the client Fam, like there's literally so many things that you can mess around with even the user so ctx.user is actually pretty much known as the user who's going to execute this uh, like this very command so whoever's executing this command you can get their user information by saying ctx.user and then if you add another dot look at all these properties man i can access the id i can access their username that's just an inkling as to what this command context can do so this is how you declare a command. So in square brackets, you like you declare the command, give it a name, and then you declare an asynchronous method for it and give it a command context. This command context must be here in every single command that you write. So that's that. So now let's actually program this command to do something. So like I said at the start of the video, I'm just gonna program this command to, like, to just send a message back to the server. So since every task is going to be asynchronous we have to put an await so let's so let's send a message to the channel where we will execute this command so right now my prefix is exclamation mark so if i did exclamation mark and then test in here i would expect a response from the bot right so let's send a message to the channel and the clue is in what i just said we are going to send a message to the channel right so let's get the channel through the context. So let's say ctx.channel. 
And then if I press dot, there's a lot of methods that you can access in this very, you know, um, um, like in this, um, like in this Discord channel class. There's delete async, clone async, send message async. So this is the one that we need to use to send a message. It's very simple. It's in the name. And there's a lot of other methods. Like if I sort by method, then look, there's, there's, there's hundreds, honestly. Look at all these methods, man. So like this is pretty much up to you to approach messing around with. Let's do send message async and let's just send a random string. I'm just going to say hello. Cool. And as usual in C sharp, let's end the line off with a semicolon. And there we go. That's our first command. So now I can just clean up the usings, make everything nice and neat. And we have our first command clause with our first command. Now, at this point, you probably tried to start the bot executing this command and saying, why does this not work? I'll tell you the reason. It's because you haven't registered that command in in the main bot config. What we're going to do in our main program, aka our main bot, is we are going to register this command class to this bot. Say commands, and then we say, and then we register our commands. So this needs like two things. So like in this format, we need to put the class in angled brackets. So let's put test commands in the angled brackets. And these normal brackets can be left empty. So we've done that. So now let's start up the bot. So let's just build everything, so you know, save everything, build everything, make sure everything is all good. So one succeeded, cool. And let's start up the bot. So cool, everything is all good. Um, looks like it's failed. Um, 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 like check your token. Okay, yeah. Um, I reset my token, so I like. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. And let's check if our bot has come online. Yes, it has indeed come online. So now let's execute that command that we just wrote. So we just wrote a, a command called test, and our prefix is the exclamation mark. So let's say exclamation mark and then test. Let's see what comes up. And there we go. Like the bot has sent a message saying hello. So pretty simple. Let's say hello to the user that executed this command. So what we can do is put this in a nice concatenated string. So let's say in in curly brackets. So so um, so um, like if you guys remember that we can get the user information by saying ctx dot user. Let's do that. So let's say ctx dot user and let's get their username and put that in the string. So let's start it up again. And let's see what that looks like. So it should get my username since I'm since I'm the one that's executing the command. So let's do test again. And yeah, there we go. I said hello, and then let's put my username there. How cool is that? So let's make a new command, and let's make it add two numbers together. So this is what I could introduce you into command parameters now. So let's say, right, so remember those two steps I taught you. Let's use square brackets, like to um, like um, like to make the command. So let me name this add because we are going to add two numbers and let's make the method for it. So it's got to be a public async task and let's give it a random name. So let's say add and it's always got to have the command context. So hopefully you guys understand that and let's give it a name CTX. Okay, so so um, like if you've ever coded in C sharp um, for a long time, they can add any sort of parameter to a method. So it works the same way in here. So I can just say int and then number one, and that will count as a parameter. So let's do, a, so like, let's add another one and let's say int number two. So how do these command parameters translate in Discord? That's just the same as saying add and then one and then one. So I put added a space and I put in a number and then I put in another space and then I put in a, the like the second number so this is how it translates so these two parameters this is how it translates so let's actually program this command to add those two numbers together so what we're going to do is, is, is store the result in a variable and then we'll send the message off so we'll say int and then and then like the result is equal to number one plus number two so we've just added both of those numbers and now we need to send that message off. So let's say await CTX channel send message async It's literally the same as what we've done before. And let's put the result in. Now notice that the result is an int variable. So if I say that the result, then it's not going to be happy because it wants a string. 
So as you can see, it can't convert from an int to a string. So literally like an easy fix is just to say to string. Literally, that's all you need to do. There's no complex thing that you need to do. Just turn it to string. So there we go. We've added our two numbers and then we're sending it to the channel. Let's give that a test now. So let's click on start. And since we added a new command, it's going to put apply in here automatically. So there's no change that you need to do here. It's just going to read the class to register them. That's literally it. So let's test out our add command. So let's see what happens if I do add on its own. So as you can see, it doesn't do anything because we need to provide our two parameters as we've got here. So the command won't work unless we put in those valid parameters or put it satisfy what the parameters are. So let's do our, you know, um, um, so like, let's just add one plus one. So let's say add one and then one, and it should give out two. There we go. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's do add. And then I don't know, like, like 10,000 plus, I don't know, one, 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 one. Let's see what that gives us. And there we go. It's give us, yeah, there it is. And you can do the same thing with all the other operations, like subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So what I can just simply do is just copy and paste this whole command. we we'll change it to subtract. Like change the method to like to subtract. And then add a minus sign here. And it will literally do the same thing. So if I start up the, um, like the bot now, and then if I do subtract, two and one it should give me one there we go like literally i've just done that in seconds let's do subtract 10 and 9 and it should give me one yeah i mean it's it's pretty darn simple honestly um so like have a mess about with that um like have a mess about with sending message also have a mess about with the command context uh, parameter because this command context is very powerful um, like as I've just shown you. So that's it for bacon commands. Um, hopefully that taught you how to create your first command. If you have any questions for me, then obviously join my Discord server. Link is in the description or just leave a comment below. And pretty much aside from that, make sure you guys like and subscribe to my channel. Obviously share this as many places as you can and I'll see you lot in the next video. Peace out.